Welcome. In this video, we will discuss C++ simple data types. So, the first simple data type we will talk about is the integral data type. And the integral data type is a data type that deals with integers. And integers are simply numbers without a decimal part. So, the first integral data type we will look at are integers. And integers look like this when you want to declare them in your programs. It is just an int int. And these integers are just whole numbers without a decimal place. So they're numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And these integers, they hold 4 bytes worth of information. And that 4 bytes worth of information that they can hold gives them a range of negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. There are a few other types of integers that you can use in your programs. They are short, and a short is only 2 bytes, and it goes from negative 32,000 to 32,000 in the range. These are mainly used if you are only going to have smaller values and don't need something that can hold, you know, 2 billion. The next one is going to be a long, and a long is the same exact thing as an integer. So these aren't used necessarily so much anymore. But there is the long long, and a long long has a range of negative 9 quintillion to nine quintillion. And these longs are stored in eight bytes of memory. And that is why they can hold such large numbers. And then there is some unsigned integers that you can use. And those simply, instead of them being able to go negative, they go from zero to double the amount that this would be. So as you can see, 32,768 plus 32,767 is 65,535. And then same for unsigned int, unsigned long, and unsigned long long. It is just a way to go up to even higher numbers, but these numbers cannot be negative. The next integral data type we will talk about is the Boolean. And a Boolean looks just like this when you use them in your program. It is B-O-O-L that you will use. And Booleans are only the values true and false. So an example of these Booleans is 0 or false and or 1, which is true. And that is why they are integral data types because although Booleans hold the values false and true, the false equates back to 0, which is an integer, and the true relates back to 1, which is an integer. These Booleans are held in one byte of memory, and the range of them is 0 or 1. And technically, you can put other numbers in there, but anything positive will be true, and anything negative will be false. And the next type of integral data type that we have is going to be characters, or as we use in our program, chars, C-H-A-R. And these are simply going to be the characters on the keyboard and are enclosed in single quotation marks. That is a single opening quotation and a single closing quotation. And with these characters, each one is going to represent an integer. So we could have something like the character A and that character A is going to be equivalent to 65 on this ASCII table, which we will look at in a second. And that is why it is an integral data type, because the characters relate back to integers. So some examples of characters would be just like the keys on your keyboard, like lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c. You could also have the uppercase versions of these as characters or you know an exclamation point a period this is a space right here you could also have something like the character one and the character two and just note that even though these are the characters one and two they do not equal the integer one and two but we will look at that in just a second on this ascii table 
And one last thing about these characters is they hold one bite or they're held in one bite of memory and their range is negative 128 to 127. But you'll see here in a second that they're used in the range of 0 to 127. The negative values are not used. So let's look at this ASCII table really quick. If we click on that, you see we get the ASCII table. And if you look over here, over here is a bunch of, um, they're not really characters on the keyboards. They're more of commands on the keyboard, such as backspace or cancel or escape. But if we look at these three columns over here, we're specifically going to look at this decimal column and the character column for each of these three uh, bigger columns. So if we look, the space bar on our keyboard is equivalent to the number 32. The exclamation point is 33. The double quotes is 34, so on and so forth. But here is where things are a little bit weird. The zero character, this is not the zero integer. This is the zero character. That is equivalent to 48. The one character is equivalent to 49, and so on and so forth. And as you can see here, the capital letters have their own numbers that they relate back to, and the lowercase numbers have their own numbers which they also relate back to. So let us move on from that. The next data type we are talking about is floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are not integral. Floating point numbers are data types that deal with continuous numbers. And a continuous number is a number with a decimal part. So let's look at some of those. The first floating point number that we have is the float. And a float is a single precision floating point number. And what we mean by a single precision floating point number is that 32 bits are used to represent the number. One bit is used for the exponent, and that one bit will be a zero if it is positive and a one if it is negative. We use eight bits for the exponent, so that is the part before the period, and we use 32 bits for the mantissa, which is the decimal part after the period. Single precision is used when the precision doesn't matter as much because there is a data type we will talk about next that is more precise than a single precision float. And an example of when you would use these type of numbers is in something like a video game. An example of a floating point number is 2.87941. It is just a number with a decimal place. And since it is 32 bits used to represent the number, the size of a float is four bytes. And the range of a float is this very small number with 37 trailing zeros, or this very lot, or I guess this isn't super large, but this other number with 37 trailing zeros to it as well. And this is a breakdown of how a float looks in computer memory. You have, say, this number, which is the same number from the previous slide, and it has one bit for the sign. Since this is a positive number, the bit will be a zero. You have eight bits for the exponent, which would be a two. And then we have 32 bits for the mantissa, which would be the eight, seven, nine, four, one. And obviously, our computers don't store just like this. They store in binary, but this just is an example to make it easier for you to understand. Remember, these would be, this would be, you know, seven zeros and then a one. I'm not 100% sure what this would be in uh, binary. And then this would, this is binary. This would be either zero or one. The next floating point data type we have is a double. And a double looks just like this when we use them in our programs. And a double is a double precision floating point number. 
And what we mean by that is that instead of 32 bits being used to represent the number, 64 bits are being used to represent the number. So it is double what a float is. And this is broken down into one bit for the exponent, positive or negative, zero if it is positive, one if it is negative. And then there is 11 bits for the exponent or the part before the decimal. So you can have bigger numbers there. And then there is 52 bits for the mantissa or the decimal part. So you can have bigger numbers there as well. And these are used when your precision matters. Examples of this would be something like a scientific calculator or a rocket that needs to make super precise calculations when it is taking off into the atmosphere. So here is an example of a double precision floating point number, which would just be pi. That's a very good example of a double, pre double precision floating point number. These numbers, since they are 64 bits, are use up eight bytes of memory, and they can go from this very small number to this very small but positive number. And here is a breakdown of what a floating point number would look like. It is the same as, or a double floating point number would look like. It is the same as the floats looked like, where you where it's broken down into a sine exponent mantissa. Except for over here, we have 11 bits used for the exponent and 52 bits used for the mantissa. So that is floating point numbers. And our last data type we will go over is the string data type. And this is just an introduction to strings. And at a later date in a different video, we will go over much more in depth strings. But for now, a string is a sequence of zero or more characters. It is a word, pretty much, or a sentence, or a paragraph. It is, it is text. So these strings are enclosed by double quotation marks. This is an opening double quote and a closing double quote. And again, there will be many more things that we can do with strings that will be discussed in a later video. So an example of a string is UNLV CS135 enclosed in these uh, double quotes or something like a file path. So C slash home slash desktop enclosed in these double quotes. And one very important thing to note with these strings is each character in a string has a position which starts at zero. So an example of that would be the string UNLV. We have a U which is at position zero. We have an N which is at position one. We have an L which is at position two. And we have a V which is at position three. And that is all the simple data types that you need to know for now. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.